Welcome to the Manhattan Holistic Chamber of Commerce. Hello. Welcome to the Manhattan Holistic Chamber of Commerce. I'm Michelle Risa, President. Tonight, I'm going to share some wonderful information about dogs, dolphins, and baseball, or really how to help corporations shift into the new business paradigm. And first, let me begin about my wonderful understanding of corporations, spending many, many years um, at Citibank uh, and other large corporations, and then finally leaving, um, since I knew that wasn't to be my life path. I uh, had small aha moments along the way, but one of my biggest aha moments came last year when my dog Shanti uh, passed away. And you might say, ah, it's just a dog, but he truly gave me a great gift when he passed in that he enabled me to truly understand the preciousness of life. And that certainly is a gift. So I um, proceeded after this wonderful shift, as it happens to be uh, with my teacher, uh, a group of people who are looking to raise their consciousness, his teacher was there. And as I asked his teacher a question, he told me that he could see a lot of fear around me. And I was really taken aback since I perceive myself as being quite courageous and a warrior, and actually felt embarrassed as I looked at other people's faces who said I was really courageous and amazing. And so I felt like I had egg on my face being told this piece of information. And the beauty of hearing that is that instead of going into denial or being angry, I just allowed myself to sit with it. <coughs> Excuse me. And later that night, as someone asked me how I was, I remember then hearing me say, a lot is going on, and before I could say, I'm overwhelmed at times, I literally fainted and fell to the floor. And this was another wonderful aha moment for me because I realized that I was really in fear. I had taken a huge leap onto the world stage, which I will share more with you later. And in my denying this fear, I could not address it. So, as you might guess, I embraced it with my heart, having compassion, recognizing that as I was leaping forward, yes, fear was there, and now I sought to, f to address it, yes. Um, and so that's a wonderful piece of information if you ever find yourself um, denying something. And let me tell you now what I was willing to address. Uh, it is my vision, which is to assist leaders become visionaries so they demonstrate the mindset and character that inspires the people in their organization and results in an organization, I'm sorry, in a just, exemplary, and economically sustainable future. So that is where I'm focused. And the question, of course, is what's happening? How can we do this? And there's really an epic shift occurring right now um, at, in shifting businesses as we know it. The old model that had profit as the only goal is no longer working nor sustainable, since it doesn't include all of us um, and enabling us to thrive beyond just the shareholders. Yes, we need to include all stakeholders, which include employees and all the communities that they serve. So a new business standard is coming, and here's where we're going. Yes? From the need to know push messaging for command and control over action from the top down, to the want to know pull conversation for mutual collaboration and co-generation of action. So some specifics so you can maybe uh, relate to this is we used to have to publish uh, if you wanted to become famous. Now we just need demos. 
Uh, we were always looking for more education, and we now know learning or experience is really what we need to have. We're moving from maps to the USB or US <laughs> GPS, I'm sorry, getting my alphabets all mixed up, um, as well as compasses. Yes, from maps to compasses. And we're moving from all planning to being, being present. If you'd like to see this on a YouTube, we have a wonderful head of MIT Media Lab, uh, Joe e Ito, sharing this bottom-up innovation emerging today. And it's called, Want to Innovate? Become a Nowist. So it's well worth your time to see this new business system emerging. And it's, it's, it's very, very worth your while. So we're now um, moving, as I say, to this place of um, embracing our most cherished and sacred values, one that infuses these ideals in our local and global economy, and one that nurtures humanity and the earth. It's the, business, it's the conscious business paradigm, and that was from humanity's team, of which I am a member of this community. Again, this shift from the old profit business model to the new conscious business model paradigm will enable business to become the most powerful force for creating a world that works for all of us. So you might be saying, well, how do we make this shift? And we actually make it the very same way we take care of our own health. Instead of looking for symptoms or, or just very specific things that are not working, we take an entire uh, holistic assessment. So for instance, if I came to the doctor with a headache, instead of just giving me a medication or drug to address the symptom, if I had a whole assessment of me, I'd begin to say, ah, it's my stress levels, or maybe it's not getting enough sleep, or maybe it's also finding that uh, my work uh, needs to be changed, or relationships need to be changed. And we do the same thing with corporations. Instead of a one-size-fits-all, here's the problem, here's the solution, we take a full assessment, and we begin to um, make a change that literally addresses all of what they need, when they need it, and how they need it. And so what we're looking at is a new way for leaders to embark. Every leader who embarks on the journey of organizational transformation must know that the journey begins first within them, because organizations do not transform. It is the people in them who do. So as much as we feel all of what needs to be done takes place first and foremost on the outside, this truth that it starts within both the CEO or people like me and you who are looking to help these organizations, it is an inside job recognizing that to the extent I transform, I'm in a position to help other people and organizations do the same. I'd like to um, really talk about then how that transformation happy, happened within myself. I told you a few of my aha moments earlier. And I'm realizing also that the more I take stock of who I am and what I need, I'm then better in a position um, to move forward. So after the event I shared with you, uh, I was able to put more organizations uh, together to support me. Uh, I was able to get the resources I needed and, again, take a very holistic approach to what was next. Um, and I, I really would love you to join me in this conversation uh, of starting where you are, transforming, and helping businesses transform. So I'll ask you to do this inner journey. So ask yourself, what for you is the same 
as my fear that was in me. Yes? What is keeping you stuck that you need to look at, embrace, have compassion for, and in so doing, then begin to address in a very full and complete and effective way. So take a few moments, grab a piece of paper, and see what that is for you so that you're in a better position to transform and therefore help others and businesses as well. What I'd like to do is um, take you through some wisdom that Shanti, my dog, shared with me as you um, think about that area that might be stuck for you. This may help you identify something that you would like to implement into your life. So here we go. Shanti's wisdom number one. Everything serves us, even, even our pain. Use it to heal, to transform. Shanti's wisdom two. Caretakers need care. Ask yourself, what do I want that I don't have? And give it to yourself. Three, feel grateful before it's gone. Number five, I'm sorry, number four, we're all doing the best we can in every moment, truly. So forgive yourself and others. Five, love unconditionally. There is no other kind. And six, and death enables us to feel how precious life is. Remember why you came here. Remember your life is sacred. So what we're going to do is look at these six and Please, not just read them, but select one that in living this particular wisdom will help you get unstuck and move to where it is your next level is. So again, just take a moment and look and see what would best support you in moving forward in your life and in your support of all others. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so let's move to our next. I'm putting up my contact information because if you're interested in living one of those pieces of wisdom, it is creating a new habit, yes? And the only way to create a new habit is to work on this for 30 days. And I'm volunteering no cost to you, to be your accountability buddy and help you daily practice making this part of your life. This is like any other new skill, whether you were to learn how to play the piano or learn a new language or be an athlete, you'd know that what was required to acquire this new skill that you'd have to practice. Simple, right? That's how we learn something new. And so I'm asking you to think of this part of your life, this personal development part, that is e it's just the same. It's using the same muscle, your mental muscle, to develop a brand new habit um, and a brand new skill. So again, I hope you take down my email address, amrisa at beyondbodymindspirit.com, and call upon me to be your um, Buddy, well, we're ready to, yes, go on to our next. I want to offer you tools to help you along the way, yes, as you are learning this. And the first, for all us busy people, yeah, is to stretch and yawn and I would like to demonstrate it. Do you think we can go back to me? Yes, thank you. And so it's really having your arms overhead. It's OK that you can't see my hands. And as you see, I'm stroking my arms. And I'll try to yawn and talk at the same time. OK, yes. 
So one great tool, and this is from the latest neuroscience research, that to refresh your mind is to do this action, as I say, 10 times. I don't need to repeat them 10, but it's such an easy movement. And if you are actually at work, I think to excuse yourself and go into the bathroom would be perfect to have privacy if you feel someone seeing you stretch would be inappropriate. But it's just a wonderful way to refresh your mind and come back to what you're doing with better perspective, making wiser decisions, even greater creativity. Let me take you to the second um, tool. Okay, if we can go back to the second, yeah. Okay, so we just need to go to the second. Perfect, long deep breathing. So just sit with a straight spine, your feet are flat on the floor, your thumb and index fingers are touching, and you're just going to take some wonderful long deep breaths for 60 seconds. And if you'd like to just change to the smaller one for a moment so people can see, perfect. Right. So all you need to do is inhale and exhale. And this very simple tool actually calms down your mind because we know through research that our mind always follows our breath. So to just get out of a lot of stress and possible anxiety or your mind going round and round, uh, you can just take deep breaths and be able to calm your mind down. All right, let's go to our third. We've got the donut energy to open your heart and we can look at this third one. It's a very special uh, meditation that is best done for three minutes, but if you only have 60 seconds, we can do that as well. And basically, what you're doing is you're holding, and we can come back to me for just a moment. Yeah, and hold your hands like such. Your thumbs are touching your pinky, ring finger, and middle. Those three fingers, I should say four, touch each other and just hold it in front of your heart. And what this mudra and the sound om will do is open your heart, right? We know love is just such an important component in all of our lives. And so just by practicing, and we'll do it three times together, but again, I'll ask you alone to do it for three minutes if you can, if not for one minute, to open your heart and feel more love. It's simply like this. As you do this in your mind's eye, see a donut shape that is circulating around your heart to the back of your body, to the side and to the front, and envision colors of gold and purple. So those are three more tools I hope you will enjoy. So let's go to our next. Neuroscience, which I've studied both undergraduate and graduate at NYU and Columbia, has really helped us know that another way to enhance what you're doing and be at peak performance is to involve a more intense practice, deeper breathing, repetitive movements and sounds, and they found it actually breaks down the neurological circuits that keep old beliefs firmly rooted in place, and so it transforms the ways we think and behave. One way to do that, to have clarity, is to journal, right? Just find a piece of paper and very clearly express what it is you're looking to do and write it as though it had already occurred. And in keeping that clear focus of what it is you want to accomplish, it will be done. Yes, being more clear, the more clear you are about the change you would like to bring about, the more you prime the brain to search for that experience. And let me explain that just for a moment. When you're
clear about your beliefs and what it is you're manifesting, literally your mind searches to make that so, which is why the expression, what you believe you manifest, exists and is true. So to the extent you focus on something else and what you truly want and believe it with all your heart and take steps towards it on a regular basis, you can't help but manifest it. It is that formula. And if you'd like some help with that, I'm happy to offer that to you. Okay, uh, I think what we're ready to do is give you more tools. And let me um, say that what I think uh, can be really helpful in actualizing all of what we've been talking about is recognizing that when it comes to personal development, we often have a 10-ton pack on our back, uh, which is called emotions. Yeah? And if we were able to see our personal development as the very same new skill that we have to learn like we learn any other new skill, right? Or let me say ha how baseball players um, learn it. They literally practice. Yes, we talked about practice. And there isn't really much emotion if they strike out. They know that the more they practice, the better they get at it, right? In fact, um, what, what they know is, um, and let's take you know, this batting average that's used as a way to really see remarkable ball players. Here we have Ty Cobb, whose career ended in 1928. However, his batting average in Major League Baseball is 366. And these days, anything close to 300 is remarkable. But if you had a 300 batting average, it means you strike out 70% of the time, right? And yet we see these people as our heroes, and they are. The key to learn here is if we can continue on our personal journey and not see when we um, strike out as either a mistake, but rather just another opportunity to keep practicing, we would achieve more of our goals in, in personal development. Even the best coaches, football players, for instance, spend, you would think, maybe 80% on working the football players' bodies, or maybe 70 or 60%, where only 30 or 30%, 30 or if we really were generous, 40% on the mind. And we find that the top coaches actually work their football players where 51% is the mind and only 49 the body. So what I'm saying is the importance of the mind and success, even at a physical level like football, is what we're finding uh, to, to work successfully. Finally, I just want to say another key com uh, tool to look for is, or listen for, I should say, is your self-talk. You know, if we can tune into what we're saying inside, that's really what we're solidifying in our mind and all our cells. And if you can catch yourself when you're negative or bringing yourself down, you'll find that you'll be more successful. Okay, so um, let's talk about this wonderful outside world. Um, I, I, want to know, I want you to know that we need each other to travel on this journey because we all have blind spots. And it's far easier for me to see your blind spots and for you to see mine than for each of us to see our own. And so what we need in this journey that will help us tremendously is community. Yes. Um, and we, um, I want to emphasize that you look around in your life for other people who really can support you and you they on this journey. Um, 
due to the blind spots. And I'll just say what I do, even with my own clients. I did a program at the New York Stock Exchange. The senior vice president had called his insurance company, and uh, they recommended he work with me. And he told me his issues, you know, many sick days and. Uh, actually in high error rate because his people were falling asleep at the monitors after lunch. And though he identified what I needed to do, and I did, I had stress management programs, worked with the kitchen to create healthier meals, he too couldn't see his blind spot, which was there was a lot of negativity uh, in the various departments. And once I began addressing that, we were able to address many of the other symptoms that were arising. Um, just one other example, a client who uh, had prostate cancer and so wanted me to address his immune system and make his body stronger. Unfortunately, his son of 29 years unexpectedly died and a rash appeared throughout his body. And though he went to specialists to address it, what they couldn't see was that the blind spot was that his heart had uh, closed. Finally, the last tip, I'd like to use dolphins, and so let's go to them. Uh, we'll, you can reach me if, if you need that, yes. That dolphins trainers make it life into a game, right? They hold up this hoop, they jump through, they're rewarded with little fish, and no wonderful dolphin trainer would yell at them and say, come on, what's wrong with you? Why don't you really do this? You've missed it a whole bunch of times. And yet, going back to the self-talk, we often speak to ourselves that way. So another tip for you is to listen again to the self-talk, and instead of shame, make it into a game. I promise you, it will be a wonderful tool to help you be more successful. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and let's learn from Deepak Chopra. As he says, managers manage what is, leaders transform what is to what can be. Leaders lead people to the center of their being. Thro thought leadership and team leadership leads to brand and marketing leadership. So I want you to um, call upon me to help you move through your transition so you are in a better position to help our corporations and businesses thrive and truly enable all of us to be um, able to live on this planet together successfully. Contact me, amrisa at beyondbodymindspirit.com. Be very happy to help you uh, in any way uh, that, we, that I can. And thank you so much for joining me and look forward to hearing from you.